All right, hey everybody, Mr. Fortin here. Happy Wednesday. We got a synchronous class today and we're still easing back into it. Got another Desmos task for us here. You did one Monday, you did one Tuesday. Hopefully it didn't feel like a ton of work, but we want to get back up and going and you guys really to get to the bottom of these three ratios. Tangent ratio, TOA, tangent of a, of a reference angle equals its opposite over adjacent ratio. Sine ratio, so sign of a particular reference angle equals the opposite over hypotenuse ratio of the, of the sides that, it, that the reference angle would have in a right triangle. And finally, ka, right? Cosine of a particular reference angle equals its adjacent leg over hypotenuse ratio here. So hopefully you had a chance to do most of this with your group in, in class today. Um, I'm filming this video though, just for people who might be doing this a little bit earlier than other groups, say it's before Wednesday and you're working ahead. It's kind of okay, but I'm still gonna ask you guys to work together in class on Wednesday. Uh, so maybe you're watching this video here, or maybe uh, your group didn't get that far, right? That always can kind of happen in our asynchronous classes. There's, a little, there's not much time, and some people might ask questions. I don't know, maybe I'm passing back quizzes on Wednesday, uh, and that'll, that would take the time. But anyways, uh, I'm gonna do the rest of this for you, so feel free to pick and choose what you wanna watch. We'll start here with question number four, okay? Because we should have launched the whole thing, done at least the first three slides, for sure, pretty early in class uh, on Wednesday, um, and I'll just take you through the rest, so you're welcome to do it with me right now. Uh, part one, trig side, uh, trig ratio side labeling. Okay, hey, this is how I, I really recommend year in and year out, how to get started on problems so that you don't make mistakes with these ratios because it can be tricky to um, tell which side is which. Once you know which side is which and you're sure about it, then it's easy to use Soka Toa to figure out which uh, trig ratio. You need to be typing into your calculator to help you assist you in solving these problems here. So anyways, looks like we have two triangles. We have a couple of thetas here, right? A couple of reference angles that we have here. Remember, theta is just a Greek letter um, and lowercase Greek letters uh, is how you name angles, okay? How you name angle measurements. Um, lowercase, like letters that we use, like ABC is how you measure uh, how you label the lengths of sides here, okay? So just quick, not, not always is your angle be uh, a measured theta. Um, it's just, it represents theta degrees. Uh, it's just what you're gonna choose for a particular reference angle here is, uh, the, is they're choosing the lowercase Greek letter theta, right? They could have chosen alpha, they could have chosen beta. But anyways, there's opposite, uh, here is adjacent, okay? So one thing you might do is, Right? They don't do it for you. Um, and in fact, I can't actually draw it on here. I wish I could. Uh, find the right angle. Okay, Find the right angle. Because, hey, it might be easier actually just to label the hypotenuse first. Okay, I had Label the hypotenuse first. Okay, So hypotenuse here. Uh, and then here I got my angle. Well, I got hypotenuse here. Other part of the angle is, right? This is the whole angle. Check it out here. This is the whole angle. But nope, that's not the adjacent side. That's the hypotenuse side. There we go. There's the adjacent side. So check it out here. That angle itself, the reference angle itself, theta, um, the two sides of the angle, right? That ray here, and then this ray here, you're going to be the hypotenuse and then adjacent leg combination. So your adjacent leg is the leg that um, is uh, not the hypotenuse. That's part of the actual reference angle, okay? Then opposite it, remember the opposite side uh, is just going to intersect the two uh, sides of the angle, not actually be the angles themselves. So anyways, shoots out that way, shoots out that way. The adjacent side and the hypotenuse side will intersect that opposite side here. And we got this. We're good to go. Okay. I'm guessing probably not many people watch that right there, but it's important thing is that makes it solving these problems a little bit easier. All right. Instructions for section one, the following slides each have a triangle with information about three side lengths of a triangle. You'd be asked for a specific trig ratio. Your task is to drag the points uh, with side information to create an appropriate trig ratio. You will know when you have the correct, uh, the ratio, ratio correct when a picture appears here. Okay. So my guess is very few people are going to watch this video because guys, this Wednesday assignment, not super hard. Maybe you're starting on your Thursday asynchronous classwork as well. Ah, thinking ahead. Hey, it's easy. I got an easy day geometry today. And that's all I'm going to do. No, just keep going, right? Put in your 30 to 60 minutes a day, right? 30, 60 minutes a day uh, to uh, make sure that you're staying balanced and getting an approach in here. Okay. So I got to move these out of the way to make this true. So here we're looking for the tangent ratio. Boom. There's my reference angle there. Uh, angle Z. So that's going to be my adjacent side. That's my hypotenuse. So I'm doing opposite over adjacent, right? If it's tangent, TOA. Okay. So 21 over 28. So three to four ratio for that tangent ratio. So I'm guessing that angle is probably around like, I don't know, 35 degrees or so, because 
this opposite side's a little bit shorter than the adjacent side. Remember that. That'll happen if your uh, degree measurement's less than 45 here. Your opposite's smaller than the adjacent. Uh, so anyways, three out of four, I'm guessing about 35 degrees, a calculator would tell us for sure what it actually would equal because we know it's a three to four ratio here and we have a tangent ratio short for that. Anyways, well done. We got that here. These ones aren't super bad at all. I think if you've been doing the Monday, Tuesday assignments, this should be a breeze and you should be patting yourself on the back and be like, cool, I learned some ratios that I didn't know existed. Okay. And then the, in future classes, what can we do with these ratios, right? Trig, trig used to be a uh, semester long course uh, back when I was in high school at least. And, uh, what I'm doing right now with you guys this year is really like the first like three weeks or so, three to four weeks or so. So you do a lot more with these ratios in future math classes um, rather than a standalone half uh, semester class here. All right. So cosine of C. OK, there we go. Reference angles down here. That's convenient enough for us here. So that's going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. There we go. 16 over 34. And again, nobody's watching this video because it's going to tell you if we got the freaking correct answer. There we go here. So pretty easy. We'll keep going. Question three, move the points to make the trig ratio. Oh, still going with C, huh? This guy's this assignment's just a breeze. This is not hard at all. Sign of C, right? Again, just practice. This is stuff, this is stuff that should be really easy to you by the time we end this unit. That's part of the reason why I'm including this as an assignment here. Sign of angle C, okay? So that's angle C there. They're not measuring this as theta degrees. They're just saying that's angle C. So sign of a particular reference angle, sign of angle C is its opposite over hypotenuse ratio. Boom! Hooray! Well done. This is not too bad. I wish everything were this easy in high school, huh? This would be so nice. Uh, question four, move the uh, points uh, to the ratio to make the trig statement correct. Tangent of X. Wow, they keep giving you reference angles that are in the bottom left corner. So remember triangles, they could have given you Z. Maybe they'll do that later. Hopefully they do. Hopefully it makes it a little bit harder here. But this is opposite over adjacent, okay? You just practice, practice, practice. So you got to just jam through these, get lots of practice. It just makes your life easier in the long run. Here, if you, if you try to practice the easy stuff and really memorize it and work for you rather than you working for it, right? You working for it. You don't be working for things all the time. You want things to be like, all right, I got this. This is going to work for me. Tangent of X degrees, not hard at all. Opposite over adjacent. There we go, upstairs. So this angle here is going to be greater than 45 degrees. We know that because the numerator is larger than the denominator, okay? Uh, and that's always going to be the case. Your tangent is going to be greater than 1 if your angle measurement is larger than 45 degrees and less than 90 degrees here. So, whoa, it went away, but I still see the well done there. A little buggy, a little bugginess here. All right, question five, move the uh, points to the ratio to make the trig statement correct. Um, okay, so now I got cosine A. So here's my reference angle over here. It's still the left side. You still made it too easy for you. Um, cosine of A is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So I'm going to do 30. Uh, on the hypotenuse, I got 34. Hooray, well done. Are these like cat whiskers or something? I don't know. What is Mr. Ford talking about? Um, anyways, we have, like guys, we have to do so much in a year, right? And things are get kind of boring from time to time. So anyways, thank you for dealing with me for an entire year. I don't I, Thank you for dealing with myself for an entire year. Oh man, it's a marathon, man. It's a marathon here. We got to keep things positive, right? That's what I'm trying to do. Hopefully, and thank you to you guys for trying to keep things as positive as you possibly can take it given this strange year. All right, part two, is this going to get a little bit tougher? Maybe we're going to have to solve for some things. Hey, calculators, part two, you will be using trig ratios to find the missing side lengths. Hooray, this is, this is it. This is really becoming geometric, second semester geometrically awakens here. How do we use the Sokotoa to solve problems? Um, so you'll be using trig ratios to find missing side lengths. You're going to want to use a calculator and you're going to want that calculator to be in degree mode, degree mode. And I see my little degree up there, DEG at the very top. So I'm in degree mode here. Are you in degree mode on your calculator? I really be practicing using your calculator. You can use the Desmos one all you want, but are you going to have that in standardized tests? No, you might have one of these. You might have a Texas Instruments calculator. So anyways, um, make sure you know how to do it on your calculator too. Uh, all right, part two, let's do it. Hey, here we go. Uh, which trigger ratio would be helpful finding the missing side length? Well, here, the, well, not the sine of 24 degrees doesn't equal X over 12. This is opposite over adjacent here. Yeah, opposite over adjacent. So here, this is our hypotenuse. That's definitely opposite. That's adjacent. So here's where, if you're on a test, just label them all. Label this. This is hypotenuse. That's opposite. That's adjacent. Boom. I care about X over 12. That ratio X to 12 is the same as the thing that's stored in our calculators as the tangent of 24 degrees. Hooray, 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 hooray. Ooh, we have a follow-up question. I was like, that's too easy if you just fill that out. Hopefully they, they put a little more on here. Write the trig ratio you would use to solve for X here. Well, I chose tangent. 
it's going to make me solve for it? I hope so, right? Guys, we actually want to get practice solving these freaking problems. Uh, so let's do it here. I'm going to use tangent of 24 degrees equals x over 12, okay? So I'm writing, this is a lot easier for me to write now on this because, hey, uh, check this out. If I hit this here to change my colors, down here I can choose the size of the pen. So I know a lot of people hate writing on this Desmos uh, sketch pad here, but if you choose a smaller pen size, it's a lot more clear to write. So here I very clearly wrote tangent. Not so clearly here with tangent, but 24 degrees, it's very clear, equals x over 12. Okay, we do want to use a tangent ratio here because it's oh, awesome. It's telling me we did it right. Awesome. Uh, relation to the reference angle, 24 degrees, 12 is the length of the adjacent side, and x is the length of the opposite side. Perfect. Use the ratio you've set up in the Desmos calculator to solve for x. All right, well, what do we got to do? Well, we got to isolate x here, okay? So I got to take whatever that ratio, whatever ratio this is in here, I got to multiply it by 12. Okay, to figure out what x is here. Okay, so remember, this is this in x to 12 is the same as tangent to 24. It's in that tangent to 24 ratio. So here I can isolate x by just multiplying both sides by 12. And it becomes really easy in the calculator after that here to, uh, to kind of get this. Um, okay, so 12 divided by 12 is 1. And we end up with x isolated on the right side here. So here I got to do 12 times the tangent of 24. That's very easy in the scientific calculator right here. Let's move Mr. Fortin out of the way. Um, and I'm just gonna do it exactly as it's written here, 12 times by the tangent of 24 degrees. Okay, tangent of 24 degrees probably should be around 0.5 or so. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, right? Because tangent of 45 degrees is one. Less than 45 degrees is gonna be less than one or so. So anyways, uh, well, I got 5.3. Does it say to, to a certain amount of decimal points? No. You can go to one decimal point. That's fine with me. Um, so anyways, if you check this one out here, is this about 5.3 and that's about 12? So you check, do my does my answer make sense? I think so. This, this is probably about, I don't know, 40% of the length of this, right? 5.3 here to 12. Yeah, if I doubled this, I'd have to go, a, I'd probably be like up here. I'd be like, if I had a compass and swung it, ooh, and I have that there and this over here, and then I have to go a little further. So 5.3 does feel right to me on this one here, okay? So uh, we set it up. Hopefully you wrote this here, the trig ratio here, tangent 24 equals X over 12, um, and solve for X here. So hopefully I see this, all this work when you turn this in, into me here. So uh, 12 times tangent 24 is 5 point, approximately 5.3, okay? And remember, these tangent ratios, these mathematicians have found it out to several, several decimal places here. Do you need to write all those decimal places? No, you don't. But you should write the approximate symbol, okay? The approximate symbol, approximately equal to, this stands for approximately equal to, this right here, right? A little squiggle right here. When I see this, this doesn't mean is equal to, right? This sign means is equal to. This means is approximately equal to. 5.3 is approximately equal to X, okay? Because X is X has a lot of digits here. This goes on here. So anyways, hopefully you're writing your answers to these trig problems with that. Is it a big deal if you do or not? No, because I think you understand the underlying math. You just don't know how to communicate it perfectly here. Okay, so I'm going to submit so uh, Mr. Foreign can see and uh, verify that you're doing okay here. All right, let's keep going, guys. Let's solve this one. Why the heck not? Uh, question seven, which trig ratio would be helpful in finding the missing side length here? We got this. Okay, 21 is my reference angle. So what kind of a side? So I always try to find my opposite generally. First. Okay, so that's easy. X is opposite. So we're either going to be using sine here or using tangent, right? Because it's so, 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 so is opposite over hypotenuse. Tangent, toa, is opposite over adjacent, okay? We don't care about opposite over adjacent because we don't know anything about that adjacent side right now. We know the hypotenuse is 22. So we're going to be using the sine of 21 degrees, whatever that's stored in the calculator as, right? Sine of 21 degrees, that's going to be equal to the same thing as X over 22 because any right triangle with a 21 degree reference angle is going to be similar to any other right triangle with a 21 degree reference angle. So uh, we know what the ratio is here. So if we have that particular slice of a 21 degree reference angle in a right triangle where a hypotenuse is 20, length 22, we can use that ratio to figure out what X is. And that's what we're going to do now. So excellent. It tells us we did it right. Oh, this is so nice. This is a good assignment, isn't it? I, mean, I thought this one might be too easy just kind of looking at it. But I think it'll be good for where we're at to be like, all right, just hammer home, get some practice, but also see that you're doing it correctly, which is kind of nicer too. Okay, so uh, let's do it. Why not? Let's do it here. Sine of 21 degrees 
okay, equals x over 22. And these are easy problems to solve for because look at this, we don't have the variable in the denominator, right? The variable denominator here. They gave us the hypotenuse now. That's nice. Hypotenuse is the denominator here. Okay, so what I'm just going to do is simply multiply both sides by whatever was being, x was being divided by, okay? Because that's going to cancel it out here, okay? So x is going to equal, oops, I didn't multiply both sides by 22, okay? If I multiply one side by 22, it's going to make it heavier. I had to multiply the other side by 22 to keep the equations balanced, okay? They start equal to one another. They'll end equal to one another if I multiply both sides by 22, okay? 22 is like a higher weight, right? 22 times heavier. So I'm doing, I'm doing this like a scale. Anyways, uh, so we uh, are going to get an approximation for what X is here by using the sine ratio here. And we'll do that in our calculator. Again, move Mr. Fortin out of the way so we can see what we're doing. Uh, 22 times by sine of 21. Uh, equals about 7.9, right? I'm going to round up here, 7.9. Okay, we get ah, 7.9, and there we go. And does my answer make sense? Does it make sense here? Well, uh, so that's 7.9. This is about one-third the length of the hypotenuse. And I think so. 21 degrees isn't a very big angle. Isn't a very big. I think we remember that uh, about an 18-degree angle was a one-to-three ratio or so, all right? We studied that towards the meaning when we're talking about trig. So this would be a little bit more than one over three. If this is 7.8, that'd be like about an eight to 22. Yeah, so this would be uh, a little over one over three. So this totally makes sense. I think we got this one right, okay? Put this one in, round to one decimal place is totally fine, right, with me here. Um, your other assignments have been telling you to do one decimal place, and there we go, 7.9 here. All right, man, only two slides left. Not bad. I think I think yours will be up to 16, so I'll, I'll tell you what the Thursday homework is at the very end here. Question eight, which trig ratio will be helpful in finding the missing side length here? Um, and it looks like we're solving another problem. Let's do it. Let's do it together here, okay? Uh, so this is reference angle here. This is the adjacent side. That's the hypotenuse. Ooh, it's harder because we don't know what the hypotenuse is. But the moral of the story is we want to use cosine. It's going to tell us we did it correctly. Okay, nice. Because this is the adjacent side. There's the hypotenuse. Ka. Cosine of a particular reference angle equals it's adjacent to hypotenuse ratio for that particular right triangle of that reference, uh, of that with that reference angle. It's one of the acute angles. It's a lot of words there. All right, let's go ahead and set this one up. I'm doing it in green this time. There we go. Uh, cosine of 47 degrees. Equals gonna have to be the same ratio as whatever the adjacent over hypotenuse is here, right? Because that's the, the definition of the cosine of a 47 degree reference angle. Um, okay, so 28 over x. All right, here's where you're thinking. Some people panic right now. They're like, oh, how do I figure out what x is? What do I do? Okay, my recommendation to you is if you study the properties of proportions and you realize this and you bore with me through the justification of this, and this is clear to you, is what I would do here is I'd set this up as a proportion on the right side here, right? Cosine of 47 degrees, that's going to be a decimal a little bit higher than one, right? 45 is cosine of, well, actually, no, never mind. I'm looking at the tangent here. But anyways, uh, this is going to be a certain decimal, okay? It's definitely going to be less than one, actually, right? Any cosine or sine, uh, the cosine or sine of anything, uh, of any angle that we're dealing with this here, is they're all acute angles, they're always going to be less than one, okay? Because the hypotenuse, your denominator, is always gonna be larger than the adjacent side. Always gonna be larger than the opposite side here, okay? So anyways, uh, this is gonna be a decimal that's less than one. If we divide it by one, it's still the same thing here. But anyways, more of the story is, I would do an extreme swap here, okay? You can do properties and proportions. We've really talked about mean swaps. That's what you have to do more often here. But you can swap the, the, the extremes, okay? Reason why you can swap extremes is 28 over X, what does it equal? Well, it equals cosine, of uh, 47 over one, okay? So I could have just moved this over here, and what do you notice? Means, these are now means. I could swap those, okay? So it, originally there were extremes, now they're means right here. So I know that your book, in the actual textbook, they say as a property of proportions, they have that mean swap thing there, but you can also swap the extremes of a proportion, okay? So that's 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 how I would solve this one to make it a lot easier. I mean, you could have multiplied both sides by X and divided by cosine of 45, 47 degrees, but part of my job as a teacher is to also point out 
faster ways for you to do it. Okay. And hopefully get enlightened that way. See a neat trick that somebody else is doing. This is what I'm going to do. And hopefully follow my logic, right? If you follow the logic, it makes it a lot easier uh, to do it here. But what we're doing is we're going to swap where the X is and the cosine of 47 degrees is because they're in the extreme positions of those proportions. Okay. So what I got here is X. X over one, right? I don't need to write the one again. I was just reminding you, this is how we, for a fraction over here, we can change this to a fraction. So it's now, you can see the proportion a little bit better. Um, so we're gonna put X over here and then we're gonna have 28 over cosine of 47 degrees. And we can use our calculator for that now. X is isolated. We know what 28 is and we're gonna know what cosine of 47 degrees is here because we can simply put that in our scientific calculator. So our scientific calculator knows this. We're in degree mode. Great. Okay. So we're going to do 28 divided by, and it's, again, it's important to me in degree mode because that's how we measure angles in our geometry course. Our protractor postulate is written for angle uh, measurement in terms of degrees, not some, not radians, which is something you'll study, I think as early as algebra two, some, maybe your algebra two kids can kind of tell me about that. I haven't taught that yet. Anymore. But anyways, uh, I, when I taught it in the past, it actually has included radians. Once you get to something called the unit circle, when there's trigonometry here, okay? So anyways, uh, I got this, 28 divided by cosine of 47 degrees. I got approximately 41, 41.1, right? Uh, we're, we're going to one decimal place. In my other answers, I'll do 41.1 on this one here too. And then what am I doing? I'm doing my approximate, I meant to do my approximate, is approximately equal to, so X is approximately equal to, kind of looks like a congruent symbol. Anyways, uh, X is approximately equal to 41.1. I'm going to one decimal place because that's what I did on um, the last ones here. Okay. And then what am I doing before I type my answer here? I'm checking, does my answer make sense? Or is there a glaring error that I maybe had did and maybe I should rethink, reconsider my answer. 41.1. Well, that looks good to me because this is 28. This is a bit longer than that, right? 41.1. It's not twice as long as this. It's less than twice as long. So I think we did it right. Did we do it right? I, I think so. Okay, 41.1, let's bake it in. Okay, but always just spend that half second. Does my answer make sense? Okay, does my answer make sense? And lock it in and uh, move on a little bit further here. Okay, what questions do you have? Hey, type it in. Mr. Forden will be sure to check those out on Wednesday at some point here. And we've gotten to the end of this assignment. Very good. Okay, awesome. Not sure how many people are going to watch this because uh, I think a lot of people will finish this assignment in class on Wednesday. It's kind of nice. We finally found a task that I think is good to do in class. Um, which doesn't take much time at all, okay? Um, what you can do now is you can start on your Thursday asynchronous homework, okay? Use that time accordingly, okay? 30 to 60 minutes every day, right? You got to be doing math every single day if you expect to do pretty well. Um, so 30 to 60 minutes, right? Uh, this shouldn't have taken longer than 30 minutes. Um, so you got some time to maybe start thinking about tomorrow's asynchronous classroom homework. Okay, section 6x, six, six, cosine and uh, uh, sine ratios coming your way soon. You message me if you have any questions or you can put them down here on the uh, Desmos task here. Have a great Wednesday, guys. Bye.